Well, I'll, I'll um, be short and sweet, as they say. <laughs> um, uh, this is uh, uh, my, sh I guess the last time I had a show here, it was about four years ago. And this body of work that you're seeing here is over the past two, about two years of working. Um, and um, it, it, it's in a way, it's uh, a very personal show. It's about my family and my friends and uh, people that I treasure, let's put it that way. This piece right here is called Little Bear. I want to talk about that and then I want to read a poem. Little Bear is, was the starting point of this show. Uh, I suddenly realized one day that I was reading to my grandson the same book that I'd read to my two, um, to my two sons who are now in their 30s. And it is the Little Bear series. And I don't know, I was working up the idea of doing small, delicate trees of nature, and Little Bear became the part, the starting point for that. I have a poem. <laughs> I'm always inspired by poetry. Um, the Sound of, of the Trees by Robert Frost is the name of that piece next to it, the little nest with the words inside. Um, Robert Frost, uh, I, I, well poetry for me is a kind of starting point for all the work. It inspires me, it helps me go to the place where as an artist you need to go. You need to remove yourself from everything and go to a place that, that I, I call it floating above, is the way to think about it. Um, and the poem I want to read is by Mary Oliver. And I think it fits this piece right here. But it's about how we, how we think as artists and how we create. And um, I'm going to try to do a good job. So here we go. Can you all hear me? <laughs> All right, um, that pretty little beast, a poem, has a mind of its own. Sometimes I want it to crave apples, but it wants red meat. Sometimes I walk, I want to walk peacefully on the shore, and it wants to take off all its clothes and dive in. Sometimes I want to use small words and make them important. And it starts shouting the dictionary, the opportunities. Sometimes I want to sum up and give thanks, putting things in order. And it starts dancing around the room with its four furry legs, laughing and calling me outrageous. <laughs> but sometimes when I'm thinking about you and no doubt smiling, it sits down quietly, one paw under its chin, and just listens. That's it. Little bear. So, uh, Mary Oliver, along with Robert Frost and Emily Dickinson, uh, you know, they're my, uh, they're my heroes, you know. Uh, they take you through good times and bad, and as an artist, the idea of finding and, and listening to another voice and then reinterpreting that voice in your own thoughts and your own process is what we do as artists. And uh, this show is, it also has some of my uh, drawings. And I, these are actually monotype, ghost monotypes, I call them. And uh, then I uh, print them. And this jacket, by the way, was created by my son, Ben Taylor, who is way Ben. <laughs> <laughs> ben is a costume designer uh, and, uh, in Austin. And he did this for Les Mis. Isn't that right, Ben? Oh, good deal. And uh, I saw this jacket and he was sewing it up in the corner and it just reminded me of the male female of uh, Duchamp, uh, Rosa C'est la Vie. And so I printed this and then I went back in and did all this drawing on it. And you have to look closely for the drawing because I don't want you to see the drawing. I want it to be kind of, I call these things when I do them, uh, nursing them back to health. 
I draw them in such a way that they become dimensional. I flatten them and then I, you know, bring out their depth. And the name of the show, and I'm going to just kind of peek over here, is called With or Without. And this is uh, a piece that I, um, I feel like is going to lead to other pieces. Sometimes you make things that, I don't know, uh, spark your ideas and say, I'm going to do something else with that, you know, and do more with that. Uh, but the piece is, uh, without the line, it, I'm sorry, without the leaves, which are in the box, by the way, there's all the, all the leaves, <laughs> I have to say, that, <laughs> all the leaves that were on this are in the box, and uh, except for one gold leaf. <laughs> working with gold at the Temple Emmanuel for the near to meet, I couldn't help just putting gold somewhere else. <laughs> and so, um, and my idea is that with the leaves, it becomes this natural feeling, this love of nature uh, that inspires me. But without the leaves, it is this abstracted line that says so much, that divides the world. It's just, it's a beaut uh, you know, it's, it's basically that. Um, and then the back wall back there are my wonder trees. I call them wonder. And on the other side of the wall, there is, a, is the first line by Robert Frost. And it is, um, it says, uh, I wonder about the trees. And I've done several what I call first line pieces. It is a crochet piece on the other side of the wall. And that's why I call these the wonder. These are Jerusalem black olive miniature trees. Um, they were actually, I didn't kill them. <laughs> they were already dead. <laughs> so I, I couldn't kill them. <laughs> uh, and uh, when I got them, uh, I got them at the bonsai store and the guy said, well, they're dead. Do you want them? I thought, oh God, I want those. <laughs> I want those dead trees. <laughs> Anyhow, they are, um, they're, they're, to me, they're, they're, even though they're small and intimate, I think they, I think they feel large in my mind. And, uh, and then one other piece I'd love to talk about is right over there. And this was given to me by a friend, uh, an artist named Jim Owens. And this piece is called Brother. And this was his brother's christening dress. And Gene is a sculptor here in town. And he, he lives in Fort Worth. And uh, he gave me this dress about four or five years ago and said, I think you'll do something with it. And I couldn't figure out what to do. But that's what happens, I think, as an artist. We find things. That's what we're, that's what we're looking for, you know. And then another friend gave me the piece over here that I call Good Luck. And that piece came from Lene Glatt and her great aunt, Lene, is that right? Yes. Sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. Sister and I fell in love with it. And it's one of my, what they, I call my Chad drawings, where I cut the, the little squares out. Uh, and, and the piece is called Forever. Good Luck Forever. <laughs> I think that's, we should move on <laughs> with that good note. What do you all think? Any questions? You got a question? Yes. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about the piece with the cotton? With the cotton? Yeah. Yes. Well, it's another personal story. I, I'll, um, the, um, the cotton, the cotton, I call it a cotton tree because it's very straight, <laughs> like a tree. And, um, uh, my, my partner and I, Harry, we were driving into Louisiana, and I, um, I had been very ill, and he was trying to uh, humor me with a, a trip. <laughs> with, and if you know Harry, he doesn't do trips. <laughs> and so we were driving along this road, and I saw this wonderful field of blooming cotton that had actually been partially picked, you know. And I, um, I had never seen it before. I'm from southern Indiana, Kentucky. I never, you know, we got tobacco, and we all say backa there. Uh, <laughs> but we I've never, had never seen cotton. 
And I just kind of went, oh my God, it's like, it's, it's like stars in the sky. It's glowing. I just, I loved it. I, I got so excited. And so uh, Harry actually got out of the truck and dug it out for me. And, <laughs> and so again, another four years later, <laughs> I figured out that I was going to cast it. And uh, the actual stems and everything is all bronze, but the balls are actually cotton uh, that I reinserted. And uh, I always think of, I know that you don't think of bronze and cotton together, but I always think of uh, Degas, little ballerina, with her little skirt. And when I saw that at the uh, Hirshhorn many years ago, I think it was the Hirshhorn, and uh, I never will forget, oh man, how brave. You put fabric with bronze. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> so I mean, on occasion, I have mingled bronze with things that you wouldn't suspect should be in there with it. And uh, like the piece over here, which is called Nature's First Green is Gold, I have incorporated um, netting and bronze wire and um, that's a glass ball in there that I gold leafed. <laughs> gold leaf and everything. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is the last piece I just finished. And uh, this, I morning. this morning, <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost. Uh, but I love it because it's my ode to Richard Tuttle and his kind of <laughs> throwing stuff all different ways. And because and, I'm really always kind of orderly and so for me to do that it took a little punch but I'm really glad I did I think it's singing don't you all think it's singing yeah so any other questions we'll move on here we go